your weather first with Storm Team 5. Good Sunday evening, everyone. I'm Storm Team 5 meteorologist Chad Rathensberger. Temperatures here this evening, fairly comfortable in the 50s, and a few lower 60s, still hanging on 61 right now. In Appleton, nothing but clear skies here across the state of Wisconsin. Notice some cloud cover off to the west. That is a sign of warmer air slowly making its way eastward. We will eventually see temperatures back closer to average in the mid-70s for many of us for your Monday with lots of sunshine. And we're talking about highs close to 90 later on this week. More details on that coming up. Local 5 News at 10 starts right now. From WFRV TV, Green Bay. Fox Cities and the Lakeshore. This is Local 5 News. Good evening and welcome to Local 5 News at 10 p.m. I'm Eric Richards. June is usually one of the busiest months for weddings, but because of the health crisis, the wedding industry is off to a late start. Local 5's Rhonda Fox takes us inside the first local bridal show of the season. Unfortunately, with the stay-at-home order, we were originally planning a virtual event, and then when the stay-at-home order lifted, we decided to have it in person here at Letchcrest. Now, brides can shop for invitations, cakes, and the dress for their special day, but with some noticeable alterations. We took some different precautions to make sure that the event is okay for people to come. So um, brides or guests, when they purchase their tickets online, they picked three, one of three different time slots. It's not just the brides that are happy to be part of this only local summer bridal event. Everything has changed so much. It's, it's, it's a fun experience, that's for sure. Vendors have made some changes to protect potential brides. We don't want everybody, you know, touching all the samples and everything. So we have individually boxed a variety of our samples, uh, one for each couple to take home and try. Aside from staff wearing face masks, brides won't notice too many changes when they walk down the aisle. I don't think that people should really get uh, flustered and um, worked up about not being able to have the wedding that they planned because they probably can have one very similar. Bride to be Emily Swanson is remaining calm despite the chaos of planning a wedding during a pandemic. I'm hoping it doesn't have as much of an effect on me, but um, I do really feel for like the amount of planning that goes into it and then imagining what it would be like as a bride that would have to, you know, reschedule, cancel, shuffle. In De Pere, Rhonda Fox, Local 5 News. Thanks, Rhonda. The popular wedding site, The Knot, is reporting that uh, nearly 4% of weddings in the U.S. have been postponed due to the pandemic. News now out of the Fox Cities, and even though there was no Flag Day parade in Appleton, one local club found a way to spread patriotism. The Valley Vet Club cruised to six senior facilities in the Fox Valley. More than 20 Corvettes drove decorated cars by the senior living residences to spread some red, white, and blue spirit to the residents. Despite the parade being canceled, members of the Vet Club still rolled through Appleton because they wanted to show respect to two special groups. For us, it's important to, to do both, to honor the, the caregivers and the people in the senior centers and also our country for, for the Flag Day. The Valley Vets are a community service organization and have been a part of the Appleton Flag Day Parade since 1984. Well, we first brought you the story of Miguel Duran's fight against a rare cancer in January, and unfortunately, we have some sad news to report. Miguel lost his battle with cancer over the weekend. He was diagnosed with rhabdomyosarcoma, which is a pediatric cancer of the soft tissues. Miguel was a huge fan of wrestling, and Local 5 covered his last wish to receive a varsity letter in the sport. Nearly two years ago, Miguel started chemo and blood transfusions to keep the cancer at bay, but things took a turn for the worse in March where he transitioned to home hospice. Miguel's mother says that he was bedridden for a week before passing and is truly grateful for the outpouring of support. Uh, she said in a quote here, uh, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. With the help from the community, we were able to make all of Miguel's dreams come true. He was a warrior. Miguel will always be remembered for his strength, courage and big smile. Arlene also tells Local 5 that Miguel wanted to donate his tumors to research so that he can help other children.
News now out of Green Bay, and the doors are open once again at the Green Bay Diocese Parishes, where uh, they finally opened the doors for Mass after several months of closures due to COVID-19. Local 5's Paul Evenson shows us some of the new protective measures put in place in hopes to keep parishioners safe. It's been three months uh, minus five days. That's how long I've counted to come back to Mass. Uh, very, very excited. Excitement was in the air as parishioners at St. Francis Xavier Cathedral in Green Bay returned for the first in-person Mass after months of virtual services. You can, you know, do well with the uh, the stuff um, live streamed and um, you know, and computers and radios and stuff like that. But really, there isn't. It's really taught me there really isn't anything as in person, face to face. New guidelines put in place by the diocese included additional sanitizing stations, a mask and temperature taking table as parishioners enter church, and new social distancing recommendations during the mass proceedings, as well as communion distribution. I have complete confidence the pastors and pastoral leaders and parish leaders, they're doing a really good job and they want to do a good, a thorough job and give people confidence that they're safe, but they can come back to Mass and that's a beautiful thing. Given the level of social unrest across the country, those in attendance say having the ability to gather together in person and in prayer was even more critical. When we get isolated from one another, we start thinking the worst instead of the best, or how we're different from other people, how we're better than other people. That's not acceptable. We're all made by God. We're all loved by God. We ought to find ways that we have common ground that we can work together on building a civilization of love. In Green Bay, Paul Evenson, Local 5 News. Thanks, Paul. Bishop Rickon stated that if there is a second surge of the COVID-19 cases, the diocese would likely handle any changes to mass on a community level. We are just getting started here on Local 5 News at 10. Next, the University of Wisconsin system has made an announcement about classes for the fall semester. We'll tell you what the plans that are, are, in, that are in place. Plus, violence erupts after another officer-involved shooting involving an African-American man in Atlanta. A sunny start to the work week, and then we're talking about some rain chances in the next few days. We'll let you know when that will arrive coming up in the Storm Team 5 forecast. You're watching Local 5 News with Connie Feldman.
And now, from the area's certified most accurate forecast, eight years in a row, meteorologist Chad Raiflisberger. Well, despite all the sunshine we had today, temperatures struggled to hit 70 for many locations thanks to a east breeze coming off the lake, keeping us a touch cooler compared to where we should be this time of the year, which is in the mid 70s. Here are the high temperatures across northeastern Wisconsin on the Sunday afternoon, a lot of upper 60s and lower 70s. We will get warmer already by tomorrow. I think many of us back closer to average in the mid 70s for your Monday. Now, right now, the Storm Team 5 Skyview camera powered by Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin in Oshkosh. Things are quiet, 59 degrees under a mostly clear sky. And as we make our way over to Appleton now, still at 61 this evening, College Avenue awfully quiet at the moment. And here in downtown Green Bay, clear skies overhead. Officially at the airport, 56 degrees with an east wind at 8 miles an hour. Your forecast tonight. And into the morning hours on Monday, not showing a whole lot, maybe a few high level clouds moving through at times, but overall, we'll call it mostly clear. And then lots of sunshine as we start your Monday morning. And temperatures for many of us in the 40s early tomorrow. And like I mentioned, we'll get back into the 70s by the afternoon. Right now, we're at 48 up in Anago, 54 in Menominee, 44 up at Washington Island. And we're looking at the upper 50s so at the moment in Fond du Lac as well as in Oshkosh. Those winds are pretty light, generally under 10 miles an hour, and they will likely stay that way into the early morning hours tomorrow before we get a little breeze by the late morning and afternoon for your Monday. So weather headlines for you on this Sunday evening. Clear and quiet weather for tonight. A beautiful weather expected for your Monday with plenty of sunshine. And like I mentioned, highs back into the mid-70s. And then it gets even warmer by the middle of the week, we're talking about highs in the upper 80s to around 90 for a few days later on this week. More on that coming up in the seven-day forecast. All right, now we're looking at a mostly clear sky, just a few high-level clouds across north-central Wisconsin at the moment. Here's the setup. We have a large and strong area of high pressure across eastern Quebec, giving us very quiet weather, not only across the state of Wisconsin, but areas to the east as well. Most of the Great Lakes region are dry. A couple of rain showers well off to our south and east. Notice a little more cloud cover to our west across Iowa, Minnesota, and into the uh, Dakotas as well, where we have some showers and storms moving through. That's a sign of some warmer air that starts to build into our area over the next few days. So a future cast here for tonight showing a mostly clear sky, lots of sunshine as we start your Monday morning. Could be a passing cloud or two tomorrow afternoon, but that is about it. And then Monday evening and Monday night still looking mostly clear with that high pressure off to our east and still plenty of sunshine as we end the day on Tuesday. I think that trend continues even into the day Wednesday and Thursday with our next rain chance. And finally, moving in Friday and Saturday, maybe a few lingering rain showers on Sunday. Looking further ahead, the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook. Temperatures near average here for the state of Wisconsin, but everywhere else, we're looking at above average temperatures here for that time of the year. See a forecast for tonight mostly clear, temperatures in the 40s. And then for tomorrow, filtered sunshine, a bit warmer as well. Highs away from the lake in the low to mid 70s. Out on the water tomorrow, a south breeze around 10 knots with waves near one foot. Here's your seven-day planner. Look for plenty of sunshine Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Highs in the mid to upper 80s Wednesday and Thursday with the next rain chance arriving Friday and again on Saturday. The Kick and Algae Report for today had pollen and mold once again very high. You can always find this forecast anytime. It's on our Storm T5 mobile app. Download it for free on the App Store and on Google Play. So dry and much warmer later on this week, Eric. All right, that sounds very good, Chad. Thank you very much. Sure. All right, straight ahead for us right here on Local 5 News at 10, we will update you on the latest on the coronavirus in our state when we come right back.
Mic check. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Mic check. One, two, three. And welcome back to you. New at 10 o'clock, the University of Wisconsin system has announced that students will be returning back to campus classes in the fall semester. The UW system president, Ray Cross, says that all of the campuses are preparing an environment that, re re uh, that reduces risk, rather, so that students and faculty and staff can return to campus. A plan team has been in place in order to handle how to proceed through the COVID-19 pandemic. A series of recommendations have been made that include developing an attendance policy that encourages six students to stay home and determining isolation and quarantine capabilities throughout the 2020 and 2021 school year. A death investigation is underway in Marquette County. The county sheriff says that they received a 911 call around 3.30 on Saturday of a woman who was not breathing following a kayaking accident along the Macon River. Life-saving efforts were not successful. The victim has been identified as 57-year-old Tammy McCauley of Ripon. McCauley was reportedly kayaking with her family at the time of the incident. The exact cause of the accident remains under investigation, but foul play is not suspected. In national news tonight in Atlanta, there is violence due to another officer-involved shooting of an, a black man. That uh, was how things looked last night. A Wendy's was set on fire a day after the incident happened in the restaurant's drive through Angry protests continued well into the night hours with uh, other small fires being reported in that area. The violence began after a, a deadly attempt, attempted arrest of a 27-year-old by the name of Richard Brooks Friday night. Police say that they received a report of a man sleeping in his vehicle and blocking the drive through There was a struggle, and according to Atlanta police, Brooks was shot after taking one of the officer's tasers away and running. Last night, the officer was fired. The one who shot uh, the suspect, Garrett Roffey, was terminated from the police department, and the other officer, Devin Bronson, also at the scene, was reassigned to other duties. Now, attorneys representing Richard Brooks' family are calling for action. The shooting death comes as protests continue after the George Floyd death in Minneapolis last month. Late last night, the attorneys spoke with the media, calling this latest incident difficult to believe. California's attorney general is being asked to investigate the death of a young black man who was found hanging from a tree. The initial finding of suicide has alarmed the community. Can I also ask that we stop talking about lynchings? No. At a contentious press briefing, residents in the L.A. County city of Palmdale demanded an independent investigation into the death of Robert Fuller. The 24-year-old was found hanging from a tall tree branch early Wednesday morning in a public square across from City Hall. Investigators didn't say if a ladder was found nearby. We were sitting here staring at this tree. It don't make no sense. That's right. Fuller's sister, Diamond Alexander, along with activists, now demanding answers after they say the sheriff's department rushed to conclusions. For example, in one release, officials said it appears Mr. Fuller tragically committed suicide, even though homicide detectives were still investigating. A second statement released by the city linked Fuller's death to COVID-19 related depression, reading, sadly, it's not the first such incident since the COVID-19 pandemic began. But Fuller's sister said, he wasn't depressed. Robert was a good little brother to us. We've been hearing one thing, then we hear another. And we just want to know the truth. It's the second recent hanging death of a black man in the area. On May 31st, after a night of George Floyd protests, Malcolm Harsh was found hanging from a tree in neighboring San Bernardino County. Officials said there are no signs of foul play, but said detectives were still investigating the cause and manner of death.
Meanwhile, demands for an investigation into Fuller's death have gained national attention after tweets by both Senator Kamala Harris and Kim Kardashian went viral. Now, the latest on the coronavirus numbers in our state. Wisconsin's downward trend in positive coronavirus cases continues. The Department of Health reports that the percentage of positive cases has dropped below 3%. There now are 22,758 positive cases with 692 related deaths. Of the test results available today, 2.6% of the tests were positive, and 73% of the confirmed positive cases have recovered. Elsewhere in the state, Door County has 39 cases out of Gamey, 337. Brown County now sits at 2,469. If you do not see your county listed here, you can always get that information on our website, wearegreenbay.com. Burke, how you doing? How you doing, Eric? All right, the PGA Tour gets back on the golf course. NASCAR ends up running under the lights in Miami, and it is a new era in Luxembourg with some Sunday night racing on the dirt track. We'll have that story and plenty more coming up in sports. All right, there's a look at your lottery numbers. We'll be right back. And now, Local 5 Sports Director, Burke Griffin. Well, for the first time since the first round of the Players' Championship, real golf took place on the PGA Tour with 16 of the top 20 players making the trip to Texas, including the top five overall for the Charles Schwab Challenge, formerly the Colonial in Fort Hood. Moment of silence at the tournament for the fourth straight day in memory of George Floyd, 8.46 a.m. Shot of the day, more Rory McIlroy, oh, from the bunker, bouncing in off the pin for the bird. Jordan Spieth, well, he's trying to get his mojo back. Long birdie putt on four to go to 13, under and a share of the lead, but he would finish tied for 10, 18 now. Daniel Berger needing a birdie to force the playoff, and he gets it to go. Xander Shoffley in contention late, but the short par putt rims out. He falls to... 14 under the bogey cost him a chance for the playoff. In it. Oh, my God. Colin Morikawa, the gimme. 
And that would lip out. So Daniel Berger, he becomes the first winner on the PGA Tour since March, getting his third career victory. All of those coming in the month of June. When it comes to winner's circle in NASCAR, four drivers have dominated this year with multiple wins. Just 10 races this season. Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski, and Denny Hamlin. And after today's race in Miami, just who would come out on top? Well, they got five laps in before they had a lightning delay and had to sit things out for a while. They get back on the track. Once again, Mother Nature shuts her down for a bit. So we've got some night racing. And Hamlin not only takes the first stage, he would end up sweeping the first two, becoming the fifth driver to do that this year. But guess what? None of those guys went on to win the races. Three laps later, Joey Logano and Ryan Newman would get to exchange a little pleasantries. No harm done for real. And then... 22 would block the six and down the stretch, a handful of lead changes. Denny, high side, putting the pedal to the metal, and he would eventually pass Chase Elliott and take over, becoming the first driver of the season to win all three stages and the race itself. Now, a little closer to home, a local racetrack opening up on a new yet old night for racing. The Berg in Luxembourg has been around for years as a dirt track, but after Years of declining grandstand attendance on their traditional Friday night. It might have looked like they were going to close following the 2019 season. Not the case because today they opened up and dubbed it the COVID Crusher. That happened earlier. Fans of all ages in attendance given a show including some flames and thankfully no injuries. The racers though, they say it means a lot to return this season on Sunday night. Definitely, that was that was a fear where you're kind of losing all your outlets for fun and that, and just hunker down at home. And this is a way to kind of ease into summer again and try to get back to normal. All right, and Chad Rathlisberger will have a final check of weather coming up after the break.
Closed captioning is sponsored by Fox Valley Surgical Associates. Time now for that final check of weather. Uh, Monday, sir, is my birthday, so am I looking at sunshine? Hey, a great day to have a birthday <laughs> tomorrow, Eric. First of all, happy birthday. I hope Thank you, you enjoy it. We have a good forecast for you. Lots of sunshine. Right now, temperature still in the 50s uh, for much of the area. Not too bad. Uh, clear sky overhead. The clouds off to the west. And they will stay out that direction through your overnight. Look for temperatures in the 40s as we start your Monday morning. But by the afternoon, highs in the low to mid 70s. More sunshine on Tuesday with a high near 82. And then mid to upper 80s by Wednesday and Thursday of this week. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, everyone, for keeping it local here at 10. Sports Extra with Burke Griffin is up next. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a great night.